delighted to be here today at Sunny Plumpton for the Star Sports video blogs for the Cheltenham Festival 2013 and I'm very much in esteemed company. I'm joined by three men that need no introduction but I'm going to do it anyway. To my left we've got Claude Duval, the punter's pal from The Sun, Tom Lee, Channel 4, the betting expert and Bill Esdale, the City AM racing editor. For all the flat fans out there, we do have one race of interest for them on the week, and that is the Triumph Hurdle. Um, cracking race once again this year. Pretty much revolves around three horses at the top of the market, which are Our Connor, Far West and Rolling Star. All have been impressive in their prep races. Um, myself nailing my colours to the NJ Henderson Moss uh, Rolling Star, only because I've backed it at decent prices. For me, the big danger is definitely Far West. I know the Nichols camp are very sweet on it, and... I would put it in as the main danger. Claude, there's lots of 33 to 1 shots here, aren't they? 46 entries. Mr. <laughs> Bromley bought 48 of them. Sadly, he's not here to talk about them, so you'll have to represent him. Um, I haven't got time, I'm afraid, right, <laughs> okay. to, uh, to uh, do a, a Bromley type performance. You're quite right, it looks to be uh, amongst the first three in the betting there. Um, it's not a race, I have to be honest and say, it's not a race I ever get involved in because I think it's an absolute uh, roulette. Too shrewd, Claude. Well, it's just uh, equine roulette as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> the great Fred Winter, of course, he, he would never have a runner in the race when he was a trainer. He, you know, he thought that um, over the years that horses win this race subjected to pretty strenuous... Uh, too early on in their career. Too early on in their career and, then, yeah. and never go on. Mm. Um, you're right, far west. They, they won't hear of him being beaten. No. Um, so... He would be he would be my selection. Although uh, I know our Connor, they think the world of him as well. But it's I think this race ought to carry a government wealth warning because uh, the money that's lost on the Triumph um, over the years is uh, astronomical. Well, and it won't there be you any, go. And it won't be any of mine. Gun care. We'll yeah. call them afterwards. Uh, Tom. Yeah. All I'll say is that um, in terms of the Irish angle, I was at Leopardstown a couple of weeks ago when our Connor, the stable, fancied him very strongly. Uh, in the paddock, uh, there was a big, big word for Diakali, and yet Arcona absolutely thrashed him six lengths. There were two, um, there were two man in top pots there. Like correct, and, 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 and look at him. And he looked like he could have gone round again. He looked like really solid, like a little bull in the paddock. I mean, it was visually, it was very, very impressive. And he came back, he was, he was barely blowing. I mean, he literally could have gone round again. So that, visually, is a performance that sticks in my mind. So at the prices of the three... Uh, he's the one who's impressed me most in the flesh. Uh, prior to that, he'd won at Fairy House in the Bar One Racing Juvenile. That was impressive. And I would also say, just 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 of the of the, the value angle, perhaps something to creep into the frame. A horse he beat previously, Stockton's wing of Charles O'Brien. One of the uh, weekend. That beat Degora of Willie Mullins's at the weekend comprehensively. Uh, just to pay a, another handsome compliment to Arcona. So Arcona definitely has a live chance. Um, and maybe if we're trying to find something to, to creep in there, a, a big, big price. And I think probably 33 to 1, 40 to 1, still having one at the weekend. Uh, Charles O'Brien, Stockton's wing. Bill, I think we had a 25 to 1 winner this last year, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, that countrywide it, claim. it looks wide open on paper. Um, I think the top three in the market, like we've said, uh, stand out quite considerably. Mm. Um, our Connor, I agree. There's an... A nagging doubt I have about Arcona's stamina. Um, I don't think he's won over further than a mile and a quarter on a flat. And I think you can win tactically run slow two mile races around Ireland and then be found out over a strong run two miles over here on better ground. Um, he's got a lovely attitude. Uh, he's obviously the best Irish challenger and it really wouldn't surprise me if he won. I wouldn't personally be backing him because I think uh, that worries me the stamina side. Um, rolling star created a, a, a really good impression when he won at Cheltenham. You know, anyone there that day was looking and thinking, that's the triumph winner. He did it so easily. And the market shift against him on the day, as in he wasn't fit, supposedly, was, you know, they were supposed to, he was supposed to go a favourite and he was near like 11 to 4 on the off. On the and off. he jumped poorly that day. That's meant to be one of his strengths. And he had a lot to do. And <clears throat> the horse of uh, Irish Saint, of, of Paul Nichols had two dents on him coming down towards the last. And he went past him pretty easy. Yeah. Um, I'm just a bit worried that he goes <coughs> goes straight there with, with only one run under his belt because he'll be inexperienced and normally Henson tries to get two, three runs into them. Um, I was really taken by Far West when he beat River Maig at Ascot last time because I thought he was too slow to win a triumph and he showed so much speed in a tactical mm -hmm. affair where they had three fellows to go and he quickened 
And I think the Henderson camp would have thought we were made or mown down, even with the penalty, and he couldn't. And he showed so much speed that I think that if this does become a tactical affair, he'll have pace uh, uh, and speed at the end. And I think he's got stamina. I, I, I think Far West is the most likely winner of this race, and, I, and I'm beginning to really fancy him. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm on roll at start at 14s, and if I had Far West at 14s as well, I think I'd have this race by the proverbials. Yeah. Sadly, I don't. And I'd agree with you, the more I look at it, the more I watch the tapes, the more concerned I become by Far West. And it is selection time. Um, and speaking from my pocket, I will stick with Rolling Star. That'll be my section for the Super 8 competition, but massively <coughs> concerned by Far West. Well, I'll go with Far West, but as I say, I certainly wouldn't uh, be mortgaging any of my family silver on this race. <laughs> Tom? Well, at this late stage, I might need a little knockout blow to bring me back off the ropes and uh, give me some uh, some ballast. So I will throw my hat in with Stockton's win. Um, I'm going to go comfortably with Far West. I think he's had the full run. He's had the experience that the others don't have, necessarily. Here's so in conclusion, the prices for the uh, Triumph Hurdle versus at Star Sports. You've got Al Connor and Far West, joint 4-1 to favourites, Rolling Star at 5-1 and big prices the rest.